Hi friends, it's Aubrey from Crybaby Seminole Homestead. Today we've got a lot of up potting to do. I've got some tomatoes I need to transplant that I got from the East Side Urban Farm and Garden Center. And they have been growing really fast, really, really fast. One night um, or one morning, they were like, like cut like an inch below the grow light. And by the end of the day, they were touching it. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. So I was like, well, it's time for them to be up potted. And I have a few other things I'm going to be transplanting and uh, various other jobs around the homestead. So let's take a look at what we're doing next. So I got these succulents at Walgreens of all places and they were $10 each, but if you're part of their reward program, you earn dollars for every, I'm not sure how much you spend, and they um, they owed me 10. So I basically got one of these for free. So, or I, I paid $5 each on these basically then. And I do have so many of these kinds of succulents, but not this type of flower. Look at that. The, le the petals are kind of pointed. And this is from Walgreens. And then I'm going to up pot these because there's quite a bit of life going on here in a very small container. I got these pots a couple years ago from the value area of Target. It came with like yarn and string or something, which I used for something else. And I'm going to go ahead and reuse these. So I'm using this small round sheep trough, which has drainage holes in it. Um, to mix my soil. This is soil is just remnants from past projects And this is what I'm going to be using. I've heard of people throwing their soil away. I don't understand that at all I mean, I understand maybe if you had a disease in the soil, but even then I think I would find a way to clean it um, Like you like I've shown you guys before you can bake your soil. I only do that in extreme situations, but I can't imagine throwing soil away. Um, you use the same soil year to year, but you have to add organic matter to it and um, keep it watered, not waterlogged, but you wanna keep it moist so it keeps life in it. Um, but definitely don't throw your soil away. And this kind of container, the like terracotta, it loses water fast, so the best plants to use for these would be things like succulents and like other cactus and things. Um, things that don't need tons of water because it does breathe pretty well. And these are not going to be, these are going to be indoor containers. Okay. They're calling this one a spring cactus and it's priced $9.99, but again, I got a good deal because I um, had ten dollars in reward reward points, and I love these. I don't have white on my Christmas, um, Easter, and Thanksgiving cactus that I already have, so that's really really pretty. And I know people throw the containers away. Um, why? <laughs> I always save the containers and use them for smaller projects. So this plant is ready to go into a bigger container. Um, also, by the way, um, the trick to making these flower is to have them in a pot that's a little bit too small. So they tend to flower. If you put it in a really big oversized pot, you might find that your Christmas cactus, spring cactus, Thanksgiving cactus, whatever, they don't tend to flower if they have tons and tons of nutrients. So if you have them in a smaller space, it kind of tricks the plant into thinking, I better hurry up and reproduce. And that's why they flower. So um, I am up potting it because this is pretty small. Um, it's already flowering now. And that way, by the time it's ready to flower again, I'm not, I'm not going with a huge container. I'm not doing a much, much bigger container, just slightly bigger. Okay, that's why I'm not going to go for a really large size. If this was a different type of plant, I would go with a larger size. But because I know the flowering situation 
you really don't see the flowers unless you go with a pot that's just a little bit smaller than what you think you should have. So I'm going to go ahead and um, loosen the roots. And this looks like a really healthy plant. I'm looking at the roots. The roots look really healthy. Um, good established roots and they're not root, they're not root bound. So that's a very healthy plant. And I'm going to go ahead and tuck it in here and then I'm going to feed soil in around it. Okay, so I went ahead and filled it up with soil around there. I will water it pretty nicely too. It does this pot does not have any drainage holes, but the nice thing about terracotta is that it drains in a way from the edges. So like oh blooper all the way around here. This wicks air through. It's permeable. So like when this is wet, I'm going to make sure I have a tray underneath it even though there's no drainage holes because it will be moist and this will air and water are going to just wick out. So I am going to go ahead and water it in really nicely after I plant the other one and I will put something underneath it, some kind of tray underneath it, even though it does not have drainage holes because it will wet, it will wick through here. Here's the other spring cactus. Isn't that beautiful? I'm gonna do the same thing with this one really fast. As I was taking the packaging off, I noticed that this little leaf right here is separate and has roots. So I'm gonna put that in a separate container so I can get a whole new plant there. So each of these leaves can become a new plant, just like that. So I'm gonna save this leaf off to the side and I'm gonna plant it separately. This technically is two separate plants, you can see. I am going to keep it together because it looks really good. The roots here look good too, not spiraling around. Nice. And I just put just enough soil on the bottom so that it's going to be even like that. And then I'm going to fill in the edges. Now it's really good. I'm going to water it and then before I bring it in, I'm going to wipe down the, the outside of the pot really nicely. I'm going to use this tiny little pot for the little one. There we go. I'll be very gentle so I don't break off those roots on accident. And that's done. And we have some rainwater. That might move around a lot, a little bit, that's okay. It's okay if I overwater a little bit because these pots are very permeable. There we go. All right, that one's done. That one, oops, it swam away. Come back, baby. There we go. It won't take long for this to become a little bit more established. Beautiful. On to tomatoes. Here's one of the tomato pot plants I bought at the East Side Urban Farming Garden store I went to the other day. And the tag says, it's Cascade Village Blue Tomato. It's indeterminate, which is great. That means it will keep growing and growing and growing. And 75 days, dark, red with indigo splashes, heavy yields of saladet type tomatoes from Wagner of Washington. Awesome. The color on this, you can't, I, I'm not sure the picture is doing justice, but the blue on here is from the color of the leaves. I'm sure the name is not for the tomato itself because it says it's dark red with indigo splashes, but look at this. It's so green, it's almost blue. And this is the one I said was, it grew like an inch, an inch and a half in one day. Because in the morning one, yesterday morning, it wasn't touching the lights. 
and then and by the evening it was touching the lights so I don't want to burn them I'm gonna go ahead and transplant it okay so one trick I do is I will just take the smaller pot and put it inside the bigger pot just to see if I'm at the right level and with tomatoes tomatoes are pretty special because they will grow roots up their stems and I could it's called planting it deeply I could do that I'm not going to last year I did that with a lot of my tomatoes and it did seem to slow them down a bit on fruit production it does help with root production but I really want to get a lot of fruit and I'll support them if I need to but I just really this this plant looks really healthy already um, if your tomatoes are really leggy then you should plant them deeply it's a way to kind of uh, fix that problem but I'm not going to plant this one deeply if it was really really tall and leggy I would do that but it's not so I'm gonna go ahead and plant it at the same level it was at because energy will go into making roots and I want it to go into bushing out and making fruits this time I do that trick with planting it deeply on other situations especially if I had the grow light too high and the plants are stretching towards it getting really leggy then I do fix that problem by planting them deeply later don't forget to kind of massage the container that loosens them when I'm, I'm potting them, I put one hand around like this, and I use the other one to slip the, the pot off of it. This is a little bit root bound, so I'm going to loosen the roots before I place it into the pot. It wasn't overly root bound. It was just starting to grow a little bit more than the pot wanted. Now, I will say, our, sometimes we get a frost in May so I am NOT putting this outside I'm just doing the work outside and I'm gonna put it back inside the house I'm not gonna put it under the grow lights I'll probably try to put it into a sunny windowsill my grow lights are really for my seedlings and I don't really have a huge space I did buy a setup I just haven't had time to set up the garage to accommodate it I sometimes have more projects than I know what to do with. Very good. Good to go. Now this is a type I often grow. It's called San Marzano. And this one had two plants in one pot. I do want to show you. The plant has some edema. You can see these like little blisters. That usually means too much moisture. Certain varieties are more prone to edema than others, E-D-E-M-A. If you want to look that up, edema in plants, in tomato plants. But I'm going to go ahead and plant these. There's two of them. I'm going to gently massage the roots apart so I don't damage either plant. So the smaller plant ended up having a bigger part of the root system. <laughs> Be interesting to see which one grows better. Bigger plant, smaller roots. Smaller plant, bigger roots. Let's see. I'm not going to be able to film this part um, on camera, but you can kind of hold your plant up and see there's roots dangling below and feed the soil in around it so that all the roots are not mashed into one spot that they can kind of reach out into other areas like this. Once you pot it, you want to push it down, and I might need to later on add a support for this. This one and the other one are trying to fall over. I'm using a smaller pot for the smaller plant. And I'll probably leave it in here for a couple of weeks, maybe three, three, four weeks. So remember this, there are two plants before in this size pot. Okay. This size is a lot larger and it's by itself. So it's getting a lot more nutrients than it was before. Good. This one doesn't have a label, but I will remember to come back and add a label for this one. That's the baby one. Here's the one that has the blue leaves. And this one I'm probably going to end up sticking it later, but for now, just going to give it a drink and call it good. Whew, lots of work. 
also in the little time I had available, I went ahead and I transplanted those two spring cactus with the one little freebie one that was off to the side. And I transplanted the three, it's supposed to be two tomato plants, but I ended up with three. So I love that when you get a good deal, right? So I think I paid $15 for all the tomatoes and the plants that I put in up today. So that was 15 bucks. Well spent, I think, don't you agree? Hit like if you agree, $15 for all the plants I just showed you. All right, everybody, God bless, and I'll see you in my next video. So I ended up with, I think it was $20, because the tomato plants were about five bucks each, but I got three for the price of two, because one was growing on the side. So that was about 10 bucks for the tomatoes. And then it was 15, no, could because I got the discount, so it was $10 for the spring cactus. So I basically paid $10 for the tomato plants and $10 for the spring cactus, cacti. And I ended up with one, two, three tomato plants and at least three of the, of the spring cactus, although there will be more because I can propagate them. And tomatoes will, are also very easy to propagate from cuttings. We'll do another video on that. Lots of noise. All right, everybody, I'll see you on the next one.